All right, so for this project, you're going to need uh, perhaps some watercolor pencils or a watercolor palette or just regular color pencils, I think should also work, but it, you can really get some good blending with the watercolor stuff. Um, also a white gel pen or a white chalk pencil, those will work. Got my cup of water and paper towel, uh, a Sharpie or a black ink pen of some sort. Uh, and I'm going to be using a stencil for this project. And we're going to do this as a two-part picture, so I'm going to be using actually two pages of my sketchbook here for this because we are doing positive and negative space today. So I'm going to start out with my little horse stencil, which is probably really hard to see here. And I'm actually going to use one of my watercolor pencils to just go ahead and trace around it. I don't need to worry about getting too precise. I can change it a little bit later if I need to. And go back and fix some parts. But this will give me a nice consistent outline. Because we're going to have two different horses in this picture. Or in this project, I guess. And you don't need to worry about pressing too hard, you just need to be able to see just gently where the edge of the animal is. And we'll be sending home some stencils, so if you guys want to try this with a stencil like I'm doing, you totally can. Or if you want to draw your own shape, uh, your own silhouette, that's the kind of the key thing here is it is the outline of the object, that works too. But I'm gonna use the stencil. I like the stencil. So, I've got my beautiful outline that I don't think you can see at all on the camera. <laughs> wonder if I can zoom. Hmm. Oh, there you go. I'm just gonna lift it up. Come on camera, pick up the shape. Oh, I can kind of see it. Kind of. It's real faint. But yeah, it's okay. We're gonna fill it in later. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with this first one, and I'm going to be filling the inside of this horse with Space, sky, beautiful sky. Let's do, we're gonna do a tropical, a tropical sunset. So I've got my three watercolor pencils here. I've got a nice purple. I've got a, a, a nice kind of pinky red and a peach. And I think those will look really nice blended together. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a gradient for this one. So I'm going to start at the top. I like doing the dark at the top down to the light because we're going to go back in after this and add some other details so it'll look real cool. Uh, and with the watercolor pencils, it's really helpful if you color from the side. Dude, you don't want to do it top down and make like really sharp lines. You want to get just a soft fuzz, I guess. This will help it blend a lot easier, especially with these purples that seem to not blend as well. You do purple here and don't worry about getting right up next to the edge when you go over with the paintbrush you can smooth all of that out so for this one I'm gonna do kind of try to keep them kind of keep the colors in a line so I want to do a, a fade basically and what's it called an ombre 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 yeah there you go See if we can get that effect going. If you color outside the lines, no big deal. And then kind of blend just a little lightly in for the next layer. I am not sure if you can even see that, so I'll hold it up to the picture. Just real light. You can always add more color later. So 
And the key thing to remember is this will kind of darken up as you color it. So eh, you can kind of see. Yep. So next I'm gonna go in with my red. Do the same thing. Kind of over overlap a bit. So we'll get that purple fading to the red. And the goal is we're gonna try to make kind of a a nice sunset. Oh, got a little sharp there. There we go. Oh, come on, pencil. Sometimes it helps to rotate the pencil if it's not coloring on the side. Grab a different side from it. This is my coloring home. Because it's too quiet. Uh, is there a reason why you use the side of the pencil? Ah, yes. Um, it's if you do it uh, tip down, it kind of makes like a channel. Thank you, Jeannie. Uh, and the water will soak into it and you'll have the outlines basically. Whereas if you do the side of it, you can get this nice soft effect. Okay, hold it up there. Um, which will blend really nicely once you put the water over it. It'll really pick up the pigment, whereas if you do it point down, the pigment's kind of buried into the paper and it won't pick up as well. Uh, and I'll do, go back with the peach. Peach. Let's get the bottom. Let's get the legs. It's kind of just a fun, relaxing project to do. If you like coloring, I guess. I mean, I do, so obviously I picked this project, so. All right, so I've got my first layer on there. Let's see if I can hold it up. I don't know which way is up. I'm hoping that's correct. No? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now I'm gonna take my paintbrush, which is over here. Uh, and I got a little kind of a fine point one because I've got a lot of little details on this guy, but you can use a bigger one if you've got bigger spaces uh, to fill. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start blending it out. And the key is like, feel free to use a lot of water in this. We want the water to move the color around Kind of make a cool, cloudy look. You can always go back in later and fill out the details, but let's get to the big shapes first. Really mix those colors. And this is a pretty light wash of color at the moment, but we can always go back over once this layer is dry and add more if you want it to get darker. I kind of like it to be really dark at the top and pretty bright at the bottom. Uh, but it's it's up to you. You can use, use your own judgment. This is your beautiful artwork to do with as you want. And oh, legs. You gotta get the legs. Do try to, to make sure the colors, see I made the mistake of letting it dry just a little bit too long, so there's kind of a line there now. But it's not the end of the world. As it Bob Ross always says, no no mistakes, just happy accidents. Yep. Happy little accidents. Happy little accidents. Yep. See, this is, I like using the watercolor pencil for the outline because I can go ahead and blend that in also. 
Whereas if you use just a regular pencil, it'll kind of, the watercolor will kind of seal it in. And you'll always see those pencil lines, which you can kind of see on the edge here, but you can fade these ones out if you don't want it to have the outline, just by blending it a bit. There we go. And I'm gonna just kind of throw some water spots on there, give it some fun texture, make it look like maybe there's some clouds in the sky. Alright, so now I'm gonna go back and. Oh, I heard the fish. Uh, I'm gonna go back and uh, add some little wispies of hair to the mane, fill that out just a teeny bit. And we can keep adding more on the next layer as this horse runs gloriously into the sunset. Or if you're painting a cat or a wolf or something, you want them to be like super fluffy, this would be a good good time to add add a little fluff factor. Okay. Yeah. It looks like the sunrise. Yeah. So, and you can also, okay, you can see I've kind of got a puddle of water on the top here. Yep, can you? There we go. Um, you can move the colors around a little bit. Need the fish talking. Um, all right. So, we're going to let this one dry now. So, I'm going to go to the other page. So I'm actually going to go back and add another layer now. Um, Checking to make sure it's all dry. Yep, yep. Uh, I like having it really dark at the top, so I'm going to go back and layer in a lot of that purple. We're actually going to be covering parts of this bottom part with black at the end, but yep. <laughs> but we can draw it up and make that nice gradient to start with. Round two with the water.
Now another cool thing you can do with watercolors is if you don't like the particular spot, you can kind of pick it up a little bit if you just go back over with just the regular water. So if I don't like that it's making a weird shape there, I can just kind of smooth it out. And you know what? I want to do the, the spots on this one also. Because that's fun. And why not? Mm. I may have gone overboard. There. Mm, that's cool. Actually, this would have been the smart way to do it. There we go. Get those little spots. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to let that side dry again. That's what it's looking at currently. And you can really see the contrast building up, but I kind of like that. Alright, so uh, I ended up dripping a little bit on this one too when I was drying it. So this guy is a unicorn now, and that's just fine. Uh, so, now that we've got a couple layers on, you could keep adding more layers if you want, but I think they're, they're looking pretty cool. So now, you can grab your Sharpie, or yep, if you want to sketch it out first, grab one of your watercolor pencils. There it is. Um, and we're going to build a scene inside the colored parts of the pictures. So for this guy, because it's kind of Kind of tropical looking, I thought. Some some palm trees, maybe. And I'll probably put some some seabirds in there. I'm gonna do the cheap and easy V to represent a bird. You know what? It's a classic. It works. Okay. So, I, I played on the safe side. I used my pencil to sketch it out. If you are brave, you can go right in with your Sharpie, but this is where we get our markers out. So we're gonna make an outline here. So here's my, my treetop trunk. And it can be a little intimidating to color over all these beautiful colors you've made, but don't worry about it, that's part of the project. It's part of the fun. But it helps to taper if you move away. In the direction that you're going. There you go. So here's the part where you kind of build a scene. So I'm gonna, first we're gonna put like the, uh, the sand dune basically. And everything beneath that line I'm gonna color solid black. Go put another another uh, palm tree frond right down here.
over here. All right, and now last but not least, let's add some stars. Maybe it's still early morning. And well, what do you think? Yes. Should I add more? Beautiful. Beautiful. No. Okay. Um, let's add a couple stars to this guy. Now, so this gel pen, it doesn't show up right away. So you kind of have to take my word that I'm doing stuff, but it should start to develop as it dries. So I'm just gonna add a couple little polka dots, more in the uh, darker areas of the sky where it would still be kind of night looking. And if you have a paintbrush and uh, some white paint, you can totally just splatter some stars on there. I am choosing to draw them by hand because that's how I roll. I've seen where people do cool, if they've got kind of a spacey theme, they will draw like the, the constellation inside of the shape. And then the key with the stars is just to kind of keep them random. Also vary the size a little bit, have a couple of really big stars and then a lot of little dots. And then I'm going to take just like three, three of my stars and make some extra big stars that have a little extra detail to them. So I'm going to give them, kind of draw them with the, the, the beams coming out of them, little, little rays, I guess. Star beams, sunbeams, but stars. Whatever that's called. Flare. Flare, that works. And I'm doing the little kind of like just four kind of like cross looking ones, but you can do the one where it's like six. Here I'll do. Little. Okay. And this would also be a good point where you've got this white pen, so if there's parts that you want to correct a little bit, you can kind of go back over and use your pen to really go back and add shape to the outline. Uh, if you want to add a little detail, like in the main, the tail, Get some flowing lines in there. I cannot see what this ink is doing, so hopefully this will look good. If you want to actually add some a little bit of depth to your picture, um, you can go through and add some highlights, or you could use your pencils to create a little shading to separate out, you know, which of these legs is the front leg or the back leg. I kind of like them being ambiguous, so I'm going to leave them be, but that is another option. You can also even add, you know, little, little highlights to your, to your trees here. And you know what? Uh, I want to draw the moon in here. Because why not? I'm going to do a little crescent moon. Now, I don't know if you can see any of that yet. Some of it is still kind of developing. So we're going to let that dry. But here is our first glorious tropical horse. Beautiful. I can kind of see the stars and stuff on this guy. So that's the thing. Positive and negative space. Ooh, a tail of two horses. Let's see if we can get them both in. <laughs> Without knocking over the water. There we go.